back folks beautiful day out here in the red pine forest as you can see behind me i've got my coyote tractor and i've got my wc68 woodland mills wood chipper now this thing's been a real solid wood chipper and if you guys are interested in seeing my complete review of this check out the playlist that i've got dealing with it now one small issue that i've come across and you guys might have come across it as well is dealing with the infeed roller the infeed roller from time to time tends to stop rotating that's when I'm pushing material in. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't do it all the time. It just tends to do it when situations get really sort of, uh, I don't know, difficult. So the odd time I've got a branch or I guess a log going in with lots of branches and it tends to stop. And I've always wondered why is it stopping in one particular case, whereas maybe it doesn't stop in another. What I've come down with or what I've come up with rather is a solution after talking with the excellent technical support at Woodland Mills. What they told me was there's a pressure release valve on the bottom of the infeed roller control that you can adjust in order to uh, basically reset it so that it doesn't stop when it shouldn't. So I'm gonna show you today how we go about resetting that. And these are based on instructions that the technical support gave me directly from Woodland Mills. So here's what you need. Reach in my pocket here. You need a six millimeter wrench or Allen key, I guess. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go down to the very bottom of the wood chipper. And what we're looking at is, here's the control attached to a pressure release valve. And we're gonna look at that particular Allen key cap. So the six millimeter is going to fit there and I have already broken it loose. So all I'm gonna do is take it off. Okay, so just a cap. I'm going to set it up there for now. If you swing around this way, you may or may not be able to see all the way down in there. But what's at the end of that long dark hallway is another six millimeter Allen head screw. That screw needs to be tightened. We're going to tighten it by turning it clockwise until it stops. We're not going to torque it, torque it down until it stops. We're just going to turn it until it stops. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, now that is fully stopped. You'll have to take my word on that, but that is fully stopped. So when I twist all the way clockwise, it doesn't want to move anymore. From this location, I need to rotate counterclockwise one full rotation. So if you can basically make, uh, make a mental note of where your Allen key is you're starting from, you want to twist it backwards until it comes all the way back to that point. Okay, so I'm there. That is basically all you have to do in order to reset the pressure release valve. Now it'll be up to me to reinstall this cap just as we took it out. Okay, and we'll tighten that down. And that is that. So that is one of the two ways of adjusting the infeed roller. Now, the second way that the technical support staff at Woodland Mills helped me with and instructed me to do was to basically bleed the hydraulic motor that's attached to the infeed roller. Heading up here to the side of the chipper, what we're dealing with is the hydraulic motor that's attached to the infeed roller. So that's this unit here. There's two hydraulic lines going to it. We're going to deal with this line. What's going to happen is when I turn on the tractor and engage the chipper, the infeed roller is going to start turning. That's okay, that's what we want. With it turning, I'm gonna loosen this hydraulic fitting and any air that's trapped in this hydraulic system will be able to escape. You'll also have some hydraulic fluid that escapes there. You may even see some foaming. You're gonna open this valve, or excuse me, open this particular fitting for a maximum of 10 seconds and you're just loosening it enough for hydraulic fluid and air to come out. After that 10 seconds is up, I'm gonna close it, and then I'm gonna repeat that up to three more times or until I stop seeing air bubbles or foam coming from this fitting location. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the tractor, engage the chipper, and then you're gonna see me crack loose this fitting. Keep in mind, you'll need something to absorb the hydraulic fluid, so I'm gonna be using some rags.
And just like that, that's the way you bring back the in-feed roller to optimal performance. So once again, I'd like to say thanks to the technical support at Woodland Mills. I'm in no way affiliated with them. I'm just a real happy customer because they've really gone out of their way to make sure that things are working perfectly. So if you have any questions at all about the two processes I did there to get this thing running perfectly, make sure you put it in the comments below. In the meantime, if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, I'll see you guys all next time. Mm -hmm.